Welcome to Michael Potts F1, everything Formula One, but from a photographer's point of view. Now that the Formula One 2022 season is done and dusted, we can look back over the course of the year and have a look at the teams and drivers and see who's done well, who's come out top in the inter-team rivalry. While the drivers are enjoying their winter breaks, I'll be sifting through my photographs to bring you the juiciest images. Today, we're going to look at 8th place Haas. Back in 2021, they made a massive gamble. They signed two new rookie drivers in Mikita Mazepin and Mick Schumacher. And their focus in 2021 was to make sure these drivers were ready for Formula 1. They decided not to do any in-season development, even if that meant they would finish last, which is what they did. Instead, they focused their development energy on the 2022 car. This allowed them to maximise their development in a year where there's a massive rule change, in the hope to catch some of the bigger teams napping. It didn't start that well. They arrived in Barcelona testing with their Russian title sponsor and their Russian driver. And as Russia invaded Ukraine that week, both driver and sponsor were out by Friday, along with the Russian Grand Prix. With not much time left to the start of the season, the team rushed back previous driver Kevin Magnussen. They also didn't waste much sleep coming up with a new livery. The results, however, were instant. Kevin managed to get a fifth place in the opening race in Bahrain, reminding the team of what they were missing not having him around. It looked like Haas's gamble had paid off big time. Magnussen managed to pick up points in two of the next three races. But then, then there was Miami. Both cars were running nicely in the points when, all of a sudden, both drivers decided to have different incidents with different Aston Martin drivers and both failed to finish. That was the start of five races where the team failed to score any points, despite starting as high as fifth in Canada. When the team did manage to get things together, they were capable of getting both cars into the points, as they did in Silverstone and in Austria. But far too often, this didn't happen, and the car suffered mechanical issues, or more likely, crashes. Mick Schumacher had some eye-wateringly big crashes in Jeddah and Monaco, and Kevin Magnussen spent the year struggling to get through the first lap unscathed. The highlight was Magnussen's pole position in Brazil, this was quite unexpected, and he mastered some treacherous conditions to come out on top. The low point was Magnussen getting knocked out of the same race by Daniel Ricciardo. Head to head, Kevin Magnussen vs Mick Schumacher. Magnussen outscored his less experienced teammates in almost all categories, but not by as much as you'd expect. In fact, in races where they both finished, Schumacher held the advantage. The only problem for Schumacher is, in most of those races, neither of the cars scored any points. On the face of it, it looked like a good year for Haas. They scored points with both cars, and they moved up from last place to eighth in the standings. But it could have been better. There were far too many crashes, from both drivers. The team clearly wasn't happy with the return, and Mick paid the price, not having his contract renewed for 2023. Looking at these stats, you can see on average over the course of the year, they had the seventh quickest car. In 2021, Mick was the preferred driver to then teammate Nikita Mazepin, whose reputation for crashes actually masks Mick's own excessively high incident rate. So going into 2022, Mick started feeling the pressure of now driving for a much better car and against a much more experienced, talented and hungry opponent in Kevin Magnussen. That pressure led to crashes, big crashes in Jeddah and Monaco. Crashes that Mick was lucky to walk away from. There were other crashes in Miami with Vettel, which cost him points finishes. That, added to car failures he had when in good positions, meant that when he finally scored points in Silverstone, the relief was incredible. He followed it up with more points finishes in Austria, where he raced tenaciously, battling heroically for sixth place. I really thought that he had turned the page, but then... nothing. The best he could manage for the rest of the year was 12th. When his teammate got a surprise pole position in Brazil, he was last. By then, the writing was on the wall. Not only were the rumours rife that he would no longer race for Haas, but long-time backers Ferrari were also parting ways with him. We never got to see the real Mick in the two years he was in Formula 1. Part of that was a byproduct of joining during Covid, but the other part was that he hid himself whenever he could. He never made that connection with the fans, despite his celebrated name. The first shot of Mick comes from the Singapore Grand Prix. I've taken this from the Singapore Flyer, that's the giant ferris wheel next to the track. I like the contrast of the racing car juxtaposed with the commuter cars on the road above. It gives you a good sense that you're in a city. The golden colour of the track 
offsets nicely with the dark blue of the other streets. This wasn't a standout race for Mick. He qualified 13th and finished 13th. He had a brief tangle with George Russell, but apart from that, it was a fairly dull affair. The next shot comes from the Hungarian Grand Prix. It's taken late in the day on Friday practice. I've shot this with a very fast shutter speed and increased the clarity to make the shot gritty and raw. This was the race that the team bought a major Ferrari-inspired upgrade, but unfortunately it failed to translate into points. Kevin Magnussen's story is completely different. Surprisingly cast away from F1 by Haas at the end of 2020, he made an unexpected return to the grid in 2022. He announced his return with an earth-shattering fifth pace in Bahrain, five points finishes and a remarkable pole position in Brazil, and 13th in the standings were a fairly good return for him. He was too often involved in first lap incidents, and too often those led to him seeing the dreaded orange and black flag. This requires a driver to pit to have the damage to his car repaired. This happened on three occasions, in Canada, Hungary and Singapore, ruining his race each time. To be fair, it did feel like the stewards were a little bit harsher on him than the other drivers in similar positions. The first shot comes from the Dutch Grand Prix. It's taken at a quarter of a second. Here, I've moved the camera faster than the car towards the end of the shot. This creates a ghosting effect over the vehicle, and it adds a bit of movement and interest to the image. I was using a leaf filter, a six stop filter here. This lets me drop the shutter speed without having to increase the F stop. This wasn't a strong race for Magnussen. He was out in Q1 in qualifying and only finished in 15th place. The last shot of Magnussen comes from the USA Grand Prix. This is taken at turn one during the race. I've shared a few pictures from this spot. It's one that I really like. There's a lovely mix between the car and the crowd, and you have so many options on how to photograph this creatively. In this case, I've shot it at 800th of a second, getting clarity in the car, but also a little bit of movement in the tires to show you that it's not stationary. I love it when you can shoot from a low angle and get a little bit of light underneath the car as you do here. This car had a unique one-off livery for the American Grand Prix, with additional stars and blue stripes added. It was a good race for Kevin, and it was the last one he was able to score points in during the course of the year. It was a good year for Haas compared to last year. However, you do get the feeling that they wanted more from the season. They sacrificed so much in 2021 that 8th place can't feel like the reward they deserved. Still, they have a really good base to start their 2023 campaign on. And with the arrival of Nico Hülkenberg, they have an excellent midfield racer who's going to score points more often and crash less. Hopefully, he'll also be able to help Kevin Magnussen raise his game every weekend. Thank you for watching my review into the Haas F1 team. What did you think of their season? Do you think the team were a bit harsh in getting rid of Mick Schumacher? Or do you think Hulkenberg will help them raise their game? Please do let me know in the comments below. As always, if you'd like to buy photographs from the Haas team, there's a link in the description below to my shop. Here you can buy digital downloads to amazing wall art, to beautiful coffee mugs, to whatever the Formula One fan in your life desires for Christmas. Until the next one, goodbye.